Hi YouTube, um, this video is just to show you some of the animals that I've bred in the past. So we'll start with these sugar gliders. You can just make out a couple of babies on the back of one of these adults. Yeah, these guys are marsupials. They're actually from Australia. They're similar to um, flying squirrels. They've got a flap of skin which they use to um, glide from tree to tree. You can just make out the tail protruding from the pouch of a mother in this shot. And here's a couple of babies that are in a pouch that the adults use as a kind of place to nest in. And here's an adult um, carrying a larger um, baby. They carry them for quite a long time. Uh, this could be a male or a female adult. They share the responsibility. And here's a couple of babies on my hand. I mean, they're adorable anyway, but at this age, they're really cute. And here's another one. I've bred quite a few of these over the years. Next we have uh, African Pygmy Hedgehog. This is a mum suckling her babies. And here's just a handful of hoglets. They're obviously super cute at this stage. But it doesn't take them long to get to this sort of size. They grow really quickly. And these were the main colour forms that I used to produce. Dark at the front, light in the middle and albino at the back. And then next, these guys look similar, but they're not related at all. These are lesser hedgehog tenrex from Madagascar. This is a typical male at the top with the pink swollen eyes. And they get that when it's breeding season uh, and the female underneath. And this is a very newly emerged baby. It's just left the nest. Again, the babies grow really fast. So here's a mum with um, four of her babies that are catching up pretty fast to the same size as she is. <laughs> okay, moving on to reptiles. Um, this is a male Yemen's chameleon. Yemen's chameleons are probably one of my biggest successes with reptiles. This is one of my females showing the typical colour. And this shows how the colour changes when the female becomes uh, gravid, uh, i.e. full of eggs. And then they dig a nest uh, in some damp sand where they'll lay about 60 eggs or so. The eggs can then be removed um, for incubation uh, and just placed in moss like this. Um, I bred them a few times, um, but on one occasion I had two females lay eggs at the same time. So I had over 120 <laughs> eggs. And they take a long time to hatch. I can't remember if it's six months or nine months, but um, when the first little chameleon pokes his head out of an egg, it is really exciting. Um, and all of the eggs hatch over about two days, uh, and then all the baby chameleons can all be kept together in one large cage, but they get through a lot of baby crickets. Um, this is just a picture of one on the tip of my finger, just to show you how tiny and adorable they are really really cute okay next we have new caledonian crested geckos um i put this image in just to show that when i first got these um, i was only able to get hold of really drab boring colored specimens um, but i've line bred these over the years and produce now really um, nice colored individuals i think this was the very first crested gecko egg that i ever hatched out so this photo brings back memories for me um, since then I've hatched out hundreds of these guys um, and they lay their eggs in pairs so you always get like two hatch out at a time. These again were some of my earlier ones where you can see the patterning isn't particularly exciting. Here's a couple next to a two pence piece just to show you the scale. Um, nowadays every gecko that I hatch looks at least as good as this one um, with really great markings, lots of red, lots of high contrast. Um, just really nice patterns. Here's an adult showing some of the um, queen markings. And this individual shows how the background colour can change and go really dark. Okay, this next species is also from New Caledonia. Uh, these are called gargoyle geckos. Again, with um, line breeding, you can bring out certain characteristics. With these guys, I'm trying to um, develop the orange stripes on the back. Again, they lay their eggs in pairs, so I always hatch two out at a time. Here's a close-up of one hatching out. Um, this is the striped form. There's also a reticulated form. And this one is hatching out with much darker background colour, much better contrast. Next species is the Tokay gecko. 
this species is quite feisty actually quite aggressive and even at this size and um, they bite or try to and you can actually attach them to the end of your finger like a little bulldog clip next species is the giant green day gecko and they quite often lay their eggs on the side of the vivarium and you have to hatch them in situ like this other times you can incubate them by having them raised up on a wire frame above damp vermiculite. Uh, this is definitely a display species. They're really beautiful to look at, but they're very fast, so you can't handle them very easily. All the geckos that I showed you so far have been arboreal geckos um, with sticky pads on their feet. Um, this is now moving on to the ground dwelling gecko. So this is a leopard gecko. You can see their feet are different, they don't have the sticky pads, um, they have claws instead. And the hatching leopard geckos have this characteristic bumblebee-like pattern, um, but it splits up and it becomes more kind of spotted as they become adults. Next species uh, is called a Pictus gecko. They have very thin hard-shelled eggs, so again I would incubate them suspended on wire above damp vermiculite. These are very tiny when they first hatch out, as you'll see in the next picture. Yeah, this should give you some idea of their size. This was another species that I hatched literally hundreds of. Next we have the Australian Barking Gecko. And this has got a great um, scientific name, which is Underwoodysaurus, which is great. And this species holds a special place in my heart because I actually saw some in the wild in Australia. This is what they look like when they first hatch out of an egg. Um, next we have cave geckos. These are great because um, obviously in the wild they live in caves. So in captivity they don't need any heat or anything. They're fine just at room temperature. As babies they're even more stunning with this dark black background colour and yellow stripes. Uh, and also orange eyes. Oh uh, yeah, you can see the orange eyes more clearly on this one. California king snakes were the first snakes that I bred. Um, this is a striped individual. And this is the more usual banded form. Um, this one obviously has just laid eggs. And here's a baby with its head just poking out. I also bred albino morphs of this species. This is the striped form. Here you can see two albino ones mating. Um, one's banded and one's striped. This is the albino banded female laying her leathery eggs. Here she is again with her entire clutch. It was amazing to see all the babies with all their heads poking out with little red eyes. The next species of snakes that I bred were emerald tree boas. Here you can see a pair mating. Here's my female looking particularly pregnant. Being boas, um, they give birth to live young and the babies um, come out red they change to green as they grow. Here's a photo of some of the babies, um, still with their yolk sacs attached to them. An absolutely stunning species of snake. Another species of snake that I've bred is the red blood python. Here's a female wrapped around her newly laid clutch of eggs. The eggs are really big, about the size of a sort of average potato if you like. Um, and again they're leathery skinned. Um, it's safer to remove the eggs like this for incubation um, and incubate them separately in vermiculite, um, although I didn't enjoy taking them off of the female. <laughs> this was the moment when I got to see the first head poking out of an egg. I had a good mix of um, normal morph, matrix morph, and I even had a T-positive albina as well. Moving on to amphibians, my cane toes actually went into amplexus like this on the first day that I got them. I set them up in a tank like this and they actually spawned almost immediately. <laughs> my excitement was uh, short lived though because it turned out that all of the eggs were actually infertile. All of the black dots went white basically the next day. Uh, I won't give up though, uh, as I speak they're actually in my bath and both pairs are in amplexus, so you never know. Next species is the uh, midwife toad. The male actually carries the eggs around uh, on his back legs like this. And I reared up about 60 tadpoles from this species. This is then when they started getting back legs. 
Um, all the red specks you can see in here is fish food that they used to feed on. This is what the newly metamorphosed toadlets look like after their tails have absorbed. I actually built a large outdoor enclosure for these guys um, with a pond in it and everything. And now uh, they breed themselves each year. These are convict cichlids. This is probably the only species of fish that I've ever bred. But I did end up with absolutely loads of them. Moving on to invertebrates, um, these are giant African mantises mating. This is the female laying her oofka or egg case. And this is how I individually raised all the 700 babies. I had to keep them separate from each other to stop them eating each other. Here's a close up to show them. Um, they're only about a centimetre long. This is a grown on nymph. Um, you can tell they're nymphs because they don't have the long wings like the adults do. These are giant African millipedes that actually started mating in my car. They went on to lay eggs that look like this. And then here are a few babies next to a coin just for scale. Finally, this is my female um, salmon pink bird eating spider. Uh, she's absolutely massive. Um, I've only bred tarantulas once, so this is her with her egg case. And the egg case actually ended up going bad um, and went mouldy. But these are just a few babies that I managed to get out of it that did end up surviving. And this is what they look like now as spiderlings. I will try and breed this species again because my female is so massive. Um, I just need to try and source a new male for her. Okay, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. Um, there's nothing more satisfying than hatching out uh, eggs and seeing cool little creatures like this. Um, I think I'll always do it. It's a really, really enjoyable thing to do, a really good hobby. Uh, and I just love keeping animals happy in captivity. And you can always tell if they breed in captivity that you're obviously doing something right and you're keeping them in their sort of happiest state um, don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see my other animal videos um, when i post them up on youtube in the future thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video